Yeah. So I, I, I was, uh, what am I doing? Right. A lot of the work I've been doing recently is like pretty mindless and algorithmic. So I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks and <clears throat> particularly um, George Orwell essays and things. And he wrote an essay called uh, Politics in the English Language, in which he uh, criticized the use of abstract language. Um, not only because it it uh, obscures meaning, but also it 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 um, causes the author to think that they know what they're talking about, but they actually don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so that um, you have this scenario where a writer is, you know writing like an essay on something they don't know what they're talking about but the words that they use make it seem like there's something there and you know just just on the just the onus on the, of the reader to figure it out but anyways so i i thought that, that was interesting just not only that abstract language brings about vagueness but uh um, no, vagueness of meaning but also it, it it's a it, it, it causes self-deception in a way yeah, hundred percent. Like I, I notice that in science writing a lot. Mm. Um, like people will just jargon the shit out of something, and I've been um, kind of, you know, a person that does or did this a lot in my writing. I'm trying to get away from it, where I'd try to use really big words and fancy, fancy kind of sounding sentences and, and structures and shit. But like, I'm just trying to to dumb it down so that it's like really understandable, so that it's as like comprehend comprehendable as possible but i notice that like classically and traditionally scientific papers are really really bad for being that where they just use jargon and it, it gives the gives the perception that these people know what they're talking about or that there's something really significant going on what i just out of curiosity what year was george orwell's essay in uh this uh, this particular essay i'm not quite sure but he wrote uh, between like mid twenties to the late forties. Okay, yeah, because because I just I was like I was trying to think because he, he's the one who wrote uh, nineteen eighty four, right? That's right. Yeah, I didn't realize how old that book was. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of like I'm kind of surprised that this like this notion was written about so early. Um, mainly mainly because like for me, uh, like growing up. Uh, the idea of writing things that were super abstract uh, and using big fancy words and using a thesaurus was something that was heavily encouraged through um, high school. And basically the idea is in a, in a grade 12 essay, if you can make the least amount of sense possible and use big words, you get an A+. Plus. <laughs> yeah. um, so it was, it was very, very jarring for me because in when I took my first English class, um, cause, cause in a science degree, you're required to take two English courses, um, in your bachelor's degree. And one of them was, uh, academic writing and you, and, and, and I didn't really believe it at the time, but it, at least in the institution I went to academic writing was, was considered the hardest course you could take. And it wasn't because the, it wasn't because the content was overly hard. It was mainly because the entire institution as a whole, which was very surprising at the time, this was only like a decade ago, um, made a pair, like, I guess they all had the same idea where if you use any abstract words, you fail your essay, like immediately. Um, so their, so their entire curriculum for academic writing was you have to write concisely and you have to use only concrete words. Um, you have to be able to identify when you're using an abstract word and bring it down to a more simple word. Um, and and I guess in, in that point, I, I guess a lot of their English department was not poets or anything. They were all, um, I guess they were all journalistic writers, which, and and, and so I've kind of taken that meaning or or that life lesson pretty much all all the way till now, which is why I usually say I write very journalistically. But I will I will say though that um, there is, there is a, it, there is a slight nuance to it, at least from my experience. Um, 
because what I what I find is <laughs> the nice thing about abstract words is that because it, it because they are so meaningless in a way um, because you're because they're all subjective to someone's interpretation or subject to someone's interpretation um, by their generality yeah or yeah and 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 in, in case anyone the 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 description I usually use for um, abstract words for those who haven't heard my analogy before is um, an abstract word is basically a word that you say out loud and not every single person in the room will think the exact same thing. Um, so if I say the so, so if I say the word love and then I try to use my imagination to picture what that means in my head, no one else in a room will ever have the same image I have in my head. So therefore, That's a good practical definition. So, so that, yeah. that is not, I will not take credit for that. That was my first year English writing teacher who <laughs> that was his barometer for it. Cool. Um, and I wish I remembered his name. Um, I, I think, I think he, 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 yeah, he ended up like, he ended up getting so sick, um, that he stopped working as a teacher and only actually went to four classes. It was very interesting. Anyway, that's, that's an aside. Um, but the going back to the, 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 the side effect of being concrete, which I found over the years, is if you practice being too concrete, while you can get ideas across very easily and quickly, you come across as more um, standoffish and more opinionated. Not necessarily, okay, not necessarily opinionated, but your words seem a lot harsher. So you have to be a lot more careful. Because if you say something, because you say exactly what you mean and everyone knows how to imagine what you say, you, you, there's, no, there's no like softening of the blow. Because if you use That's abstract true. words, people can kind of be like, oh, he probably didn't mean it that harshly. Mm -hmm. But and, if you use... I guess that's because <clears throat> with the concrete, I guess it's a style. Yeah, using concrete words um, usually comes the active voice. Like it, it, if, you, if you're being very precise with your ideas, then it seems to me that the, the active voice would go hand in hand. Yeah. So, um, uh, have, have, have any of you ever like Gunnar, you tried, you tried doing, you, you try to use concrete words in your scientific writing, but Taylor, have you, have you, after reading that, have you tried to adopt your essay or like not your essay, but your, 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 your writing style at all oh well, i mean I, I i listened to the essay just yesterday but uh f from the writing that i've done today i, I actually did find myself rather immobilized <laughs> um j just like just just even writing a sentence you know because I, I find i'm a lot more aware of the the automatic um abstract words that just come to mind when i try to express an idea 